<clears throat> All right, so today here we are going to introduce the uh, ARM mobile app. So ARM mobile, it is an, an application for taking notes in the field. Uh, either on iOS or Android devices. And really what we're doing is extending ARM to the field without requiring any internet connection during note taking. So you can leverage all of ARM's consistency tools uh, like the, the validation lists and SE standard evaluations across all of your note takers. You can take plot photos uh, of your assessment with ARM Mobile, and they will be the, the photo files themselves will be renamed and cataloged with the ARM trial file uh, back in the office. And you can review the data immediately after the assessment uh, to maximize your rating quality. So, uh, we really wanted to target with our development of AR Mobile, uh, really target the core principles of, of quality research. So, you know, obviously entering data immediately uh, while you're still at that trial location uh, is important. And then bringing consistency to the assessments. And, and that really needs to extend across different dates uh, that you go out and take notes, across different note takers, and even across locations. And so the standardiz standardization features uh, that are deployed with ARM Mobile really, really can help with that effort. You know, the, really the only way to ensure data integrity is reviewing the data while you're still at the trial site. And so really some, some tools we'll see in ARM Mobile really help to, to visualize the data. That's the most efficient way uh, to catch any mistakes or, or strange things that, that happen with the assessment. Finally, data transfer uh, should occur in a professional manner, uh, not transcribing from paper to computer and not copy pasted from file to file. So just kind of taking a look at the, uh, the workflow uh, with ARM Mobile. So the first component is what we call the, the base information from your ARM software. So this is really your, your favorites list or, or your personal list uh, from ARM related specifically to, to data entry. So uh, talking about your standard evaluations, uh, the assessed by, which really becomes your, your list of ARM mobile users, um, crops and pests that you commonly use, and then the assessment, you know, other assessment related lists like part rated, your measurement units, you know, things like that. So this information uh, we take from, from the ARM software and copy it to the cloud storage service. Uh, we support Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive. Um, and so we save the information on the PC and then ARM Mobile downloads that base info during the installation and setup of the app on your phone or, or device that, that you're going to use the ARM Mobile for. Next, uh, we have the individual trial files that you're working with. So we're sending the trial definition uh, is sent to the cloud. It's not the entire ARM DAT file, um, but it's, it's a, a separate file. And that consists of, we're taking information from the DET to create this trial definition. And that really consists of your SEs, uh, the SE definitions list specifically, uh, any columns that don't have data yet, uh, attachments that are that are attached to the trial and and uh, kind of the, the highlighting you know, highest point highest level site details as well from the trial and that's all uh, bundled in what, what we call the trial definition. 
So all that information then is saved to a trial def folder in the cloud. And again, that is used to import into AR Mobile. <clears throat> then of course you use that AR Mobile device uh, to record data, take pictures, review assessments, and then you would export that data that you take to the cloud as soon as internet access is available. So you, all the, the motions and actions in AR Mobile are offline. And then once you have that connection again, now we can communicate with the cloud and, and send that data back. And then ARM will automatically import the data back into the trial file on your PC when the, the trial is opened. So a really seamless flow of, of the data back into the trial file. And we'll see that uh, most of those kind of in, in action here in our demonstration portion a little later on. <clears throat> so kind of just looking at um, using the app, um, it's, it's, it's really pretty easy uh, just in a, a few steps. Uh, so the first one, uh, you import the trial definitions from the cloud storage. So at that point in time, we're really pulling from the cloud. So you do need internet access uh, to download those definitions. Then you select which trials you're going to rate in that note-taking session. So from here on in now, we don't need that internet connection. Uh, you can be anywhere. You can be out in a remote location where there's no hope for any, any satellite service, and, and you'll be able to um, use those definitions that we downloaded earlier um, and choose which, which one or ones uh, plural to, to work on. Then you select or create the assessment columns to take data. So whether you define them ahead of time in the trial, so that way they're in that trial definition, or you could use an SE uh, and create new assessment columns within the, the mobile app, which will then get sent back to the trial in, in the end. Then we record the data, and that can include pictures or comments as well. Um, and you can even mark the the assessment as excluded um, to you know to drop it from the analysis, just like we have an ARM that damaged checkbox. If you're familiar with that, kind of that same idea here. If there's something wrong, uh, you can exclude it from here. Next, you review the assessment. Uh, with the heat map to catch issues and review the assessment before leaving the site. And then finally, you would export the data back to the cloud. Um, and, and again, that at that step is when you would need internet access. So you can record all the data and, and finish up uh, for the day and, and the data will be, be on that device. And then as soon as you're at a spot where internet is available, then you can open up AR Mobile again and, and send that data then to the cloud. <clears throat> so, so a question about uploading to the cloud from the mobile app, um, that is not automatic. So that would be a step you specifically take. And this is kind of a screenshot here we'll show. Um, so to export, that's a manual process so that it can occur when you have internet access again, essentially. Uh, and then we'll see after you've exported from the app, then in your ARM software, the import will be automatic. And, and taking this one step back on that data review, um, the heat map is, is the primary data review uh, we don't have a Nova or a box whisker. There's a couple of other, uh, there's a completion dashboard. We'll see later on that at least will tell you, even if, if you accidentally skipped over an assessment, uh, but from just kind of a data review, looking at the numbers, that's uh, the heat maps, the primary one. Um, like I said, we'll see, there's just a couple of summarizations. I think you get a trial average and maybe like a, a check average as well that you can see, but um, 
the, the heat map's the, the main one. Another question with the, the reception. So if you're out of reception, uh, do you need to go back and upload? Uh, correct. So you would um, basically using our flow here, uh, you start with internet access, you want to download all those trials. Then when you're in the field, there's no internet connection, you can do all the heavy lifting with the data collection. And then assuming you don't have internet when you're all done reviewing, you would close the app. Then when you, you know, when you get back to the truck, get back to the office, wherever next you have internet access, then you can open the app again and you'll have all the list of your assessments that have been completed. All of that data you took is still there uh, on the device and you would manually select and export to send the data out to the cloud. So that would, that would be a, uh, a manual step to do that. Mm -hmm. Oops, wrong direction here. <clears throat> All right, so to look at the, the, the licensing uh, for using ARIM Mobile in your organization, uh, you will need a connection and a data plan. So uh, the step one, the electronic data collector add-in, we call EDC for short, um, is the connection between your ARM software and data collection apps like ARM Mobile. So really at a technical level, this enables your ARM to export your trial definitions and that base information, which is then used by ARM Mobile. The EDC also includes our tablet data collector out of the TDCX. So if you have an active TDCX license, it uh, really receives a free upgrade to EDC. Uh, there, there isn't anything additional you would need on this connection aspect if you have TDCX already. The second step is to purchase a data plan. So the data points that are um, exported from your ARM mobile are counted anonymously. So GDM, here at GDM, we don't see any of your data. Um, it just simply, when it's being brought into the ARM software, there's just a tally of how many data points uh, come through. And that is, is tallied and billed per company invoice. So you only need one plan per group. However, you have your, your ARM, you know, invoices uh, grouped. If, if you're a company across multiple countries or anything like that, it's all kind of tied to that uh, group. And, and so all on one invoice, we will just total up all of the licenses, um, you know, that have worked with the AR mobile. Okay, how many data points on each of these licenses? And that will become that, that data plan. The, uh, the AR mobile app itself, is free. Uh, really the goal being it can be used on as many devices as you would like. There's no activation, no registration on the devices. We want it to be really easy just to pick up a phone, pick up an iPad, um, whatever devices is nearby, uh, log in and start using uh, the app. So uh, we want to make that part at least as, as simple as possible. And yes, subsample, so back at that data plan, a data point would be defined as a, a subsample. Uh, so if you're taking 10 subsamples per plot, you would have 10 data points for every plot that you recorded data, uh, as opposed to a, a trial or to an assessment that only has one value per plot. Um, images are not counted as a data point. So if you're taking a value and also snapping a plot photo, that combined is just one data point. So we're not, not wanting to count uh, an image as, as extra or that comment or you know, all those extra components to an individual uh, assessment value. Uh, those are all considered just one. But at the subsample level, if you are taking multiple subsamples, that will, will, will be a difference in how many data points are used. 
So yeah, I guess I didn't include um, the pricing number here, um, but the data points uh, right now, our data plan, we, we kind of structured it as levels. So we would call the, the data plan uh, level one um, would be 250,000 data points. Or let me make sure I say that right. Um, let me get my number here so I so I say it correctly. Um, e essentially, our goal is that any company um, that uh, let me start again. Your uh, the size of the company should kind of match up with the number of data plants, and we don't want um, a whole bunch of different levels of data plans. We want 80% you know, of clients to fit in one data plan. So nobody is stressing out about the data plan. You know, how many, how many points should I take these notes with the mobile app or should I just write them down on a piece of paper? Cause I'm worried we're getting close to our, our maximum amount. So we're really trying to, um, keep it, keep it simple and, and not have people stress out about how many points they're using. Um, when we were when we were kind of finalizing our, our licensing plans, uh, we we sent out all of our representatives across the world, and um, said, "All right, let's let's do some research. See if we can figure out what's a typical research trial, or what would be a typical number of data points that um, a you know just a typical company would have." And we learned very quickly, there's no such thing as, as typical. <laughs> so uh, of all the, all the estimating we, we could do, uh, it, was, it was hard to find just, just a, a number that just made sense. So, so we started with um, just kind of a line in the sand to say, all right, um, 50,000 data points for, it, for uh, 250, at least here in the US, it's 250 US dollars, um, your, your representative uh, most of you are probably in in Australia region or New Zealand, and Melissa can help with the the exact quote. But it would be um, 250 uh, US dollars for that um, 50,000 data points. And so hopefully that's a, a large enough number that, like we said, you know, 80% of clients will definitely just be within that realm of just one data plan. You know, 250. I don't have to think about it. It's great. Um, and then larger companies that might be taking a lot of data can have, it, it, can, it can scale fairly for, for a larger company that's taking a lot of notes. Um, so, so then if they find themselves, let's just say a group um, comes in at 80,000 data points after that first year, then that following year, they will be at level two because now they've exceeded the first level cap of 50, they're onto that second um, rung of the ladder, if you want to visualize that. And so you would have um, 250, 250, it would be 500. And thanks, Michelle has, has her, her standard language. I think I butchered the number when I first said it. And I was like, wait, that, that didn't sound right. So, so thanks, Michelle. The, um, that, that initial plan one, 50,000 points. And then, yeah, if you're a larger company um, that, that might really exceed that, trying to just scale that number up, kind of each level you increase, it's that same amount. And really uh, this first year, like we said, we really don't know what the typical amount is. So our goal, the first year you start, everyone is gonna be the first, you know, the, the level one data plan. So for everyone, it's 250. And then after the first year, we will do that tallying and can look at um, the, the usage. And, and the following year, then we can you know, give you that quote of how much next year will be. So again, using that example of that company that had 80,000. This year, if they say, all right, I want to start with AR and mobile, we will charge you the 250 for the data plan. We'll get your connections set up. Um, and it would be 275 for the connection part. Let me find my mouse here. So this part here, step one uh, is 275 to turn on this connection for whichever ARM computers you would want. It would be 275 for each one. 
and then they would have that data plan and everyone's data plan in year one will just be level one, $250 and that's it. Then when next year comes around and we'll look at that company invoice and says, hey, last year you used 80,000 data points. So that would put you at level two. So this coming year, um, we will charge 250 plus 250, 500 for the data plan for your company if you choose to continue using Air and Mobile. So we wanted, wanted to start slow and start fairly and then can have that conversation after getting kind of a year under our belt, essentially uh, with clients. And then we can have that conversation of, you know, is this reasonable, is this not? Um, will it fit your needs and, and kind of go from there, so. Like I said, really our goal with that number, we, we don't want to be ticky tack. Um, here in the US, at least we have uh, cell phone plans. And, and back in the day, it was really uh, counting every phone call you would make and the text messages. And, and you had these people be really, really concerned about when they were using their phone and how much. And we said, we, we really want to avoid that. <laughs> so we, we want to have this huge bucket um, essentially so no one really is talking uh, thinking about their their data plan they're just thinking about using a mobile because it's awesome and great uh, and taking notes with it so hopefully hopefully that'll help frame uh, the direction we're coming with um, on the licensing and yeah to reiterate each subsample value is a separate data point that was kind of one of the I think that was the, one of the harder parts for us in estimating um, what the data data points would be for a company is yeah, depending on the type of research, the type of assessment you're taking. If you're in a field where there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of assessment points you're taking, lots of subsamples, um, or maybe you have to go out and take an assessment every th three days, um, you know, it's, it's really gonna vary as to really how many data points are coming in. Another question about the app availability. So it is used, it, it's available on any Android device or any iOS, which would be like an Apple device, like an iPhone or an iPad, uh, as long as it's on the latest version of those operating systems. So you really are gonna, lo you're gonna log in with Chrome if you're on Android and you're gonna log in with Safari on Apple. So as long as you're using, as long as the device is new enough that um, either Apple or Google allows you to have the latest version of, of those apps, then it'll work. And, and it is just a, um, it's a website. It, it's a web application is, is kind of the technical term. So it, it should scale pretty nicely. Um, I'll be using an, an iPhone, I think it's iPhone SE, uh, a little later to demonstrate. So it's not the largest screen in the world. Um, and so hopefully you'll be able to see kind of how it looks scale wise. Um, but we try to make sure that the buttons are large enough that um, you're, not, you're not struggling to, to see it or click on things compared to if we had the ARM software itself, trying to squeeze it on a small screen can be a challenge. So we made sure this was a totally different development, really looking at a, a mobile app style of, of commands and, and buttons to click on. So great, great questions. Uh, we'll, we'll continue on here and maybe even cycle back to some of these two as well as, as we see. Um, and uh, working directly with SharePoint or OneDrive to the app. So uh, OneDrive specifically, I uh, sometimes I struggle with the difference between SharePoint and OneDrive, but I know specifically we support files in OneDrive, um, but would not interface directly with SharePoint. Uh, and we'll we'll see uh, in the demonstration that I'll actually you actually log in to that account, whether it's your OneDrive account, Dropbox account, Google Drive account, um, to connect to those files. So um, that'll be, that's really kind of how, how that works is connecting there, but it would be OneDrive and not SharePoint uh, currently are the ones we support. I 
actually, this was good timing because this is pretty much my last slide um, for, for the presentation. Uh, just just uh, the, the call to action here for, for modernizing the data collection. That's really our goal with, with the mobile app. Uh, we, we really just wanted to bring ARM to the field. Um, we aren't getting rid of the TDCX. So we mentioned earlier, if you have TDCX already, um, it, you're getting an upgrade to be able to also use ARM mobile, uh, but we specifically targeted a, a separate niche, if you will, of, of you know, feature set and you know, devices that should go along with TDCX as, as two different options um, for, for researchers uh, to be able to decide pros and cons of, of which would fit best with people. And, and that's really what we've been doing so far um, with people interested in, in ARM mobile. It's not so much, I like to purchase, here's an invoice, good luck. Um, but instead it's more of a conversation of, you know, what, what do you guys do currently? What, you know, what are you hoping to do? Um, and, and really finding out, all right, ARM, yeah, ARM mobile should work great for that. Or, you know, have you looked at the Talma data collector uh, because of this instead? So um, that's, that's our long-term goal, uh, not, to, not to push out Tablet Data Collector uh, as the old way to take data, but instead have really two options with the two different sets of pros and cons, essentially, um, just based on, on what your company does and what your company would need and how it would best work. work. So. So that's really our quick quick run through of, of what ARM Mobile uh, offers. Um, great set of questions. Uh, let me scan just to make sure I didn't miss any as we were going. And definitely open the floor for any other ones uh, that you might have offhand. Um, Yeah, the EDC license, hopefully I explained that. Um, question about the ARM customizations. So right now, um, it's, I believe that the technical answer, if you've worked with those customizations before, um, you may know that there is a way to convert from I'll just choose a Bayer or a BASF. There are two of, of several that have customizations. Let's just say BASF sends you a, a file of, of their customization. There is a technical way to convert that from their customization into the standard one. And, it, and you get most of in, the information can come across, but sometimes there's stuff that doesn't quite match up. And then it's kind of the same thing going back. It's that you send a standard file into their system. Again, most things match up. Um, there's, there's a mapping uh, that we have behind the scenes the programmers have to send the information through the two systems. That's essentially the same thing that will happen for your ARA mobile. So you can, you can use their files. Um, there's just not quite the guarantee that everything will line up. Naturally, the data itself you know, that has the plot, that'll go in. Um, it's some of the assessment description may or may not uh, come through. So um, that might be a good case where uh, you could try out um, try out a file and, and we could talk through to see um, if there's any, any critical thing that comes, that wouldn't come across, but for sure the data itself that you record will come across. There's no translation that has to happen there. And then a uh, question about the, the link up. So you'll, you'll see that it's actually not in the app store, either in your Google Play store or the Apple app store. You won't find Aero Mobile there. Uh, instead, it is a web app. So we actually are hosting the, uh, you know, it's kind of a website, kind of an application. It's, it's a cross between the two. Um, that's about as far as I quite know the, the technical differences. Um, but when you go to that link there that Michelle provided, uh, that really is the, the mobile app. 
And when you first go there, it downloads some of the files as we talked about them. And we'll see here when we start to demonstrate, as you connect and log into your system, you can start to pull down that base information that'll get downloaded onto your device. So it, it, it acts like an application in that it'll download that information and keep it on your device, but it's not in the app store. That way Apple doesn't have to get their cut of, of um, the funds we'd have to you know, try to charge through the Apple store, it'd be a whole, whole nightmare. Um, and then the same thing on the, on the Google Play side. So this was kind of a nice, a little more open source route to be able to, to provide through the browser instead. And we do have kind of thinking of that, uh, if you're following that link, uh, you might find yourself kind of limited right now. Uh, we do have a demonstration uh, of the app that, that you can do. And that's kind of what I'm going to walk through today as well. Uh, but we certainly offer that uh, to people who just want to try out the app. So we have, I think I've got like four or five, you know, dummy trials. They're from our tutorial list that I've, I've kind of um, refactored a little bit to be able to take data with. And so whether you want to use um, the, the Dropbox that we've set up, or we can also share those files with your OneDrive or your Google Drive account, and then you can log in um, in your own system and use those files just to play around with the app and get a feel for it. Um, just contact us and we can kind of connect you up with that uh, demonstration. A uh, question about uh, maybe some troubleshooting. If, if information doesn't come across between those definitions, um, again, this would really be in that case with the uh, customizations specifically, we really would just be talking about uh, some of the, the header details, like filling in you know, the, the pest density or the whatever. If that customization doesn't have a pest density field, although the mobile app will have a spot that you can fill it in when you bring it across and ARIM tries to bring that information in, it just won't bring it in because there's not a home for it. But that file um, that you export, there, there's actually kind of a, uh, I'll call it an archived file, essentially, you know, the, the exported data is, is a file that sits in your Dropbox or your OneDrive. So it would be obtainable again, if you needed to um, acquire that information. Um, if there is an error, just, just more generally speaking, if there's some sort of error that happens when you're trying, you know, ARM tries to download that information into the trial. Um, we have within the mobile app, there's a, a way to re-export data that you've already sent. We won't count that twice in the, the data point counting. Um, and it's kind of more of, of a troubleshooting um, tool. So it's kind of stashed away in the app, but definitely just get a hold of your, your support person. We would be able to kind of step you through that process. But there is, there is some safety nets uh, in there, really on both sides of the fence. So if, if your phone or your device didn't send it right, you can send it again. And then on the ARM side as well, uh, there's a system, if it's supposed to bring it in and doesn't, uh, there's a way we can go in and, and try to try to re-download it again, essentially. So yeah, we know with, with the data, data, obviously you don't want to mess around. You need to have those, those backup plans. So that was an important part of the way the data flow was, was designed with their program, with the, the programmers working with the app. We said, we have to have that backup plan on, on both sides of the fence uh, because you can't, an error is, is just not, not something that can be possible, <laughs> you know, to, to have a critical error where suddenly the data is just gone. It didn't work and it's not there. Uh, there has to be a, another copy of that information somewhere and not just relying on, on the cloud and now it's gone. So great, great questions. Uh, 
All right. Well, I am toggling over to my device here. Let's see if I can get it to display its screen and we can just kind of walk through a short demonstration of the app. All right, I think I'm online and I will use Let's see if I can make this any larger. That's pretty small. That is still small. Let me move this around and see if I can make it any better. Is that fairly visible for people? I'm not quite sure how well the, the screen resolution, um, if that makes it too small uh, for anyone. I've got my, my phone here. Um, Through through the the screen sharing software that we use for for support, um, so yeah, let me know if anyone's having trouble seeing it. I could try to switch to another screen that's larger, but hopefully hopefully it's working all right. Um, so this is the Air mobile app, and you'll notice actually I am in Safari. So on on my Apple device, I, I open up Safari. For an Android user, you would go to Chrome. And then you would just type in that URL. And there, that was actually provided in the, the, the link Michelle had posted. Again, if, if you work with us to, to get the demonstration or, or purchase, we'll, we'll make sure you have that URL. Uh, but it's really just, just a website, basically, you would type in. And then when you go there, it will download. The very first time, I think there's a quick little privacy, you know, the standard privacy ag agreement thing. Um, and then here we are on, on really our home page for the initial setup, the, really the initial installation, if you will, of the app. So I am going to start with the sync method. I'm going to try to move, move my mouse to show you where I'm going to click. And I actually have to take my hand off and actually click because it's a it's a touch screen, uh, but then I'm going to choose Dropbox in, in my demonstrations case. You would connect to whichever, whichever one you're going to sign into. The uh, subsample sequencing, that's just depending on your order of operations on your subsamples. Uh, are you going to, if I've got three subsamples to, to take and I have you know two different assessments to perform on them, do I want to take an, my first assessment on all three subsamples and then perform my second assessment on the subsamples or vice versa. I'm going to take the one subsample in my hand and then do both assessments and then move to the next one. Um, just kind of the, whichever direction you, you do that subsample, that is that option. Distance calculations, of course, just your, your preference on what, what you work in. And then I'll go next. And now we want to import base information. So from our slides, that was our personal list from our ARM software. And so for my demonstration, I've already done that step in my ARM to send all of my lists that are related that will be used in ARM mobile. And I send those out to our, our my Dropbox folder is really what I've done. And so now here on my phone, I want to connect to that folder and download those files to be available here on my device. So I'm going to click import. And the first time you click on it, it will open up to have you log in to either Dropbox or OneDrive. Let's see if it already remembers me or not on this device. It's not doing anything at the moment, of course. Don't know if because I'm sharing my screen, it's going slow for me or not. 
naturally when you're trying to demonstrate something, it doesn't want to behave. Okay. Well, let me just close that tab and try going there again. All right, so there we go. So um, I should have logged out of, of my Dropbox entirely. Typically, uh, you saw the screen go white and for a moment, um, it checked to see uh, if I had logged into Dropbox before, which I have in this case, this is the same device I use for all my Air Mobile demonstrations. Um, so I should have I should have signed out in the background before starting this, but you would just be prompted for your drop in this case Dropbox, you know, email and password, or whichever whichever system you're connecting to. So then we'll return back here, and now when I press import once more. The second time it will actually open up Dropbox and you can see I, I'm logged in. So that's why it didn't ask me to log in already. Now I can browse and find the files that I need. So I've got a folder structure here just for our demonstrations, but this is this is folder here, this Air Mobile is what your ARM software on your main computer will create. So you'll get that connection, that EDC connection on your PC and have that create this folder for you. And within this ARM mobile, it'll create these folders for you. It's all automatic and it'll fill it with, in our case for the base information, all of my lists. So I am going to choose this folder and say choose here at the bottom. And this will now download all of the personal lists that I'd previously exported from my PC. Now they are available here on my phone. Now for the export location, well, we wanna do something similar in this case, when we go to export our data, where should we put that, those data files? So that will be our trial assessment folder. I'll select that and this will allow the mobile app to add files to that folder in my Dropbox. So, yeah, so right now I do need to be connected to the internet. This is kind of what I would call the installation of the app more or less. Uh, so we're communicating with the cloud um, specifically with my Dropbox account to download this information. So right now I'll need internet connection. And we'll see out, uh, we'll see in a moment when we're able to move out to the field without a reception. So I press next, and now we're starting to get into using the app. Uh, the first step is basically to kind of log in. So we mentioned that in the personal list that gets sent across, one of those lists is your assessed by. That's in your trial uh, in the assessment header. Uh, you can link and give a list of names. And that list uh, really becomes your, your user list of people um, that would be using Air and Mobile. So here I'm going to choose my name as the assessed by. And now here is kind of that just the introduction um, congratulations, here we go, more or less, uh, to give us a recap of, of what's about to happen. So then I'll press done. So that's really our one-time step to, to get that information in. Now we still need internet access to import trials. So we've kind of ordered these buttons logically. We'll just kind of go down this ladder essentially of actions to take. And the first one is we need to import from the cloud to bring those trial definitions onto this device. So I will select that. And again, now we are opening Dropbox and I'm going to go into the trial definition folder here. And I have already 
in my ARM on my main computer, I have exported these trials that I know I need to take data for. I export those out to the cloud. So I can select all of these if I'd like. So this would be the way to assess multiple trials is while you have internet access, just download all of the definitions. And this will take all four of those trial definition files. Now I'll say choose and download them onto this device. So now this is the point that I can you know, put my phone in my pocket, hop in the truck and drive to the trial site. And I'll be out in the boonies, no reception, doesn't matter. I'll be able to take my data because I've downloaded those trials and a moment ago, we downloaded all of the lists and stuff uh, to be used. So that'll be the key is to import trials. And there's the number behind there to show us we have successfully imported four trials. So those are available to us, whether or not we have internet connection. And no, you do not need to download it every time. So, um, You'll notice at, we'll, we'll select trials, we'll take data, we'll export it. When that's all done and we've sent all the data out, those four definition trials will still be here. So I'll be able to just do it again tomorrow, essentially. You don't have to import every time unless you wanted to re-export the definition. So there's some flexibility, uh, but yeah, by and large, just download that definition. That'll have everything about the trial and you can just keep taking notes every day that, that you need to. Great, great questions. So now we're out at the trial site and say, all right, I'm ready to take an assessment. So let's select the trials that we're going to work on right now. So here we see the list of the trials that we have downloaded. And there's some search and filtering. If you have lots of trials uh, that you've downloaded, um, it can read your current location to sort by your the distance away, or if you know the past trial ID, things like that. There's some, some sorting you can do. Here down below though, since I've got such a short list, I can, I can just choose uh, any one of them. So maybe I'll select our fungicide study here from, from the list. I just clicked on, on this button here. It is possible to do more than one uh, if you want, if you're gonna take multiple trials. Um, uh, for this first demonstration, I think I'll keep it simple and just do one. Uh, but the screens are set up and the workflow is the same either way. And actually, um, Sometimes it almost makes more sense when you're, when you're clicking through things, when you have more than one trial as to the prompting that comes up. So we wanted to make sure that that flexibility was, was possible. But for, for now, we'll just, we'll keep it simple with, with just the one, and then I can press the done button here. So here we have the assessment planner. And, and like I said, if we had multiple trials, there would be the list of the different trials we selected that we're gonna work on now. Right now I've just got the one, so I'll click the, the button here to see our options for this trial. Oops, and I double clicked. Let me go back. Just the back button will help us go. Let me press close. Uh, so click on this button. If you click on it only once this time, then we'll see our options for this trial. First thing is the assessment manager. So let me select that. This will allow us to choose what assessments we will take. So here on the screen, I've got four different assessments. These are data columns that I had in the ARM trial that did not have data entered yet. Thus, they were included in my trial definition, and all I need to do is select one of them in order to take data for them. The arrow to the right, if you want to see a little bit more information uh, about that, 
you can see all the, the details here. Um, 20 subsamples it looks like, or 20 plants that we'll be, we'll be sampling. Um, luckily, I think we just have one subsample, so I won't have too much data to enter. Um, so that's a way to view more information about that assessment that has been set up. Now, there are a few other ways. Um, we don't have to use that list if you don't already, you know, if you haven't defined the assessments yet. The plus button up here will allow us to add columns. So there's three different ways uh, to add columns. Uh, the first one is to use a standard evaluation or an SE file if you've used those before. So if I select that, we'll see a list of SEs that have been attached to the current trial. That would be your SE definitions if you've used that section in your trial before. That's really kind of your, your set list of what, what evaluations uh, should be used in the study. And those all come with that trial definition. So these will create one or more assessment columns for us to fill in data. There's also an all tab here. Some of these lines I think are hard to see, at least on my monitor, um, but there's a, a tab at the top to switch to all. So the current trial were SE definitions. The all here is my full personal list of SEs that I've created or used over, over time essentially on my ARM computer. So that way, even if you didn't utilize that SE definitions, um, maybe you get out there and you realize, oh, I have to do this thing that I really didn't expect to. Maybe there's a, a pest out here that, that it was unanticipated and I need to do this type of assessment. Uh, you still have that full list of your SEs uh, to leverage and, and create columns with. I cancel here just to show the other options on the plus. There's also a copy column. So if I already had an assessment that I took last week and I'm gonna do the same thing again, this allows me to copy that description and create a new column with the same description essentially as the one I did last time. And then finally, there's also an ad hoc. Basically, you start with a totally empty column and you have to hand type all the details you know, on this device to fill it in. Obviously, that's the, probably the most painful one. Um, uh, I think if you only relied on the ad hoc, you'll, you'll find a lot of frustration with ARM Mobile. Um, so really leverage some of these other functions. And that'll really be a big part of next week's webinar. Uh, we'll train on, on using and building SEs uh, because I think it's, it really will change um, for sure the way you would use ARM Mobile, um, much less ARM as a whole. It's definitely a good training, even if you're not using ARM Mobile, but um, a, lot of, a lot of automation and standardization come by implementing those SEs. So at any rate, I'll cancel those options since I do have uh, assessments defined here. So maybe I'll choose, let's say we're gonna take both of these two. So we'll have two assessments to take in this trial. Uh, then I'm gonna go up to the back button here to go back one step, looking at some of our other options here that we can do for this trial. Attachments, that's grayed out just because I didn't have any files attached to this particular trial. Uh, but if you have um, images or uh, you know some other documentation that you've linked in your ARM trial, those actually are, are included in the definition and you can view them on the phone if you, or, or a device if you would like. Details, this is kind of the header and some site description information um, that comes through. 
So this is, is not really for editing, more just, you know, FYI, you need to look up some details for this trial. So, you know, the title, trial ID, um, location, things like that. Uh, kind of nice, the contacts are there as well. Um, so if you needed to, to get a hold of the, the study director or, or the cooperator, um, if it's been filled in in the trial, uh, then you have that information available in the app. Past crops, just a really simple treatment list and the, the dates of, of when applications were performed. And that is one notable thing, a uh, common question we get is, can I use AIR Mobile to record application details? Uh, and the answer is no. So uh, AIR Mobile is, is really geared just for the assessment ratings. If that is something that would be, would be nice to have, uh, TDCX does have that capability. So TDCX has the full ARM that you're really running with additional features. So any, any screen uh, of the trial that, um, that you have, you can use, you can fill in with the, the TDC. Here in ARM Mobile, again, we're just focusing on the assessments. All right, I'll go back again. Uh, just real briefly, the walking path, that would just be on your map, um, the, the order you'll walk through the field. So um, movement arrows is what we call it in the ARM software. It's, it's the same thing. Um, so you can set that here. Uh, if you already set it in your trial in ARM, that option will come through. Uh, pin trial location, that will take your current phone GPS coordinates and, and link that to this trial. And again, that, that kind of tied into some of the location filtering that you can, you can do early on as you're selecting trials. And then finally, remove trial if you, need, if you want to delete that trial definition from this device, uh, that would be the remove trial. So uh, the seeing the randomization, um, you you will see that in the assessment heat map, but we don't have just a regular trial map in the Air Mobile. If you did want that, uh, I think a, a real simple workflow would be to print out the the trial map report, um, and by print out, really generate as like a PDF um, or an image, and then just attach it to the trial, and then it would show up here in the attachment. So you could you could um, add it that way if if you did want really anything uh, that you'd want to have with you, uh, just include it as an attachment. You know, save it in a document and have it as an attachment there. Um, before you export that definition and it would be available then. All right, so we chose our two assessments for this trial. So I'm going to close. And again, we could repeat if I had another trial I was going to work on after this uh, AM fungicide, uh, then we would just repeat the same process. There would just be another item in this list and we just go through that same step of selecting or creating our assessments. But we have just one, uh, so I will press the back button. Now we're back to the home page, and we've actually crossed off a couple items from our list. Uh, we selected trials, so you can see there's a one behind there. That's that fungicide we chose. And we actually also just completed the selecting of the assessments. So we're ready to enter assessments. Uh, real quick on the attachments, um, what, what file types. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not totally sure if we have a limit to them. Um, I'd have to play around with that a little bit. That's a good, that's a good thing for me to try out if there's certain, certain files that won't work or if we just ask the phone to open them up. I'm not real sure. 
So file types for attachments. Personally, I, off the top of my head, I, I think I've played with a PDF and an image like a bitmap or something. I've, I've seen those work, uh, but yeah, I can't say I've tried um, <laughs> too many crazy ones. So that'd be, be something good to, to play around with to know. Um, all right, so enter assessments. We've got that two to reiterate that we chose two assessments to take. So this is really our screen for entering in the data. At the top, we've got our trial ID and the plot number uh, that we should be at. Um, treatment number, we'll kind of get to these different functions here, um, but the main part of the screen are the assessments to take. So this first one was our disease index. Um, and because it's a one to four rating scale, we actually have one to four buttons right here for us. So I can just click on um, whichever one I want. And then I can move and click in this box here to fill in the assessment for my, my phytotoxicity in this case. Then I can press the return button and that will move me automatically to the next plot in my map. The numbers, uh, I think we're limited to, um, can't remember if it's nine or 11, somewhere in there, uh, just, you know, just screen space, basically how many we can fit on the screen. So once you get a scale that has more than 10 or so um, items to it, then yeah, you won't have these buttons. Instead, it'll just be a box like this and you would, you would be able to free type. And that is triggered through your rating unit minimum and maximum. So if you wanna turn these buttons on or off, that's really how it's controlled. So for this assessment, I had a, a unit minimum set to one and the unit maximum set to four. And that's really what triggered these buttons here. So if I didn't want them for some reason, that would be the trick as well as just to clear those out. So a couple of, of features as we, as we fill this in, um, let's say I just kind of, kind of eyeballing this whole trial and noticing, I think there, you know, there's not a lot of pest pressure. I, I'm guessing most of the, um, most of the plots here are going to be a one. So I have the option for a default value. So there's this green circle kind of refresh symbol to the right. If I press that, I think my screen sharing, sometimes the very edge buttons I struggle to, to click on, this will set a default value um, for all of the other plots we're going to encounter in this assessment. So here's just kind of a tool tip more or less uh, I'll tell it I won't need to be reminded of this every time and then say, all right, thanks for the information. And now it's grayed out because it's been set. And so we'll see if I'm ready to move on to the next plot. So I'll just type in maybe, maybe I'll set 15 as the default here. So I'll click on my button to the right for this assessment as well to set my default, there it went gray, so it uh, is set. Now I will press this arrow button here to navigate to my next plot. Again, or I could have pressed enter. Now you'll see in gray that that one is selected by default for me. And my 15 is here as well. So although I'm at the next plot, if it's the same as that last one, it's the same as my default, then all I need to do is press this green double arrow to basically skip over this plot and accept my defaults. And that's just what AR, ARM Mobile is gonna tell me that, hey, anything I haven't changed, take the default value. 
And I'll confirm that action. And now we're on to plot 104. Maybe this one, the, the disease is a little worse. The disease index is worse, but the FIDO is the same 15. Okay, fine. Um, this will change the two will be the true assessment. But since I haven't changed this value, when I move to the next plot, 15 will be saved. So now we're up to plot 105 here. A couple other functions for a particular assessment. Uh, this this drop down arrow here will be where we have those other components for a particular assessment value. So if this plot is damaged somehow and I want to um, exclude it from the analysis already, I can turn that on or off. There is a comment. So I can click in here and type in a comment for whatever um, you know extra information I want to put in here. Oops. Then I can also take a picture. So I'll click on that camera icon and it will open up my camera app, in this case to my boring desktop here, and I'll take my photo. I guess I've got my flash on. <laughs> and I can either retake that picture if it didn't come out quite right, or I'll select to use that photo, and that will attach that picture to this plot and it will be included in our export. And when the data comes back into ARM, we will have that image linked to plot 105 for this assessment. The image file itself will be downloaded to the same folder that my trial is at on my computer. And it'll also be renamed to match. It'll have the trial ID, plot number, treatment number, um, to, to really identify what it is and what it's linked to. If anyone's familiar with the TDCX capabilities, it's that same logic that we use when taking pictures and renaming them. Or if you've used just the attach photos and had ARM rename pictures for you, it's really that same function, that same system of, of renumbering or renaming uh, to match that information. All right, let me zip that one up. Same thing, you, you, of course, you have those same options uh, for each assessment uh, that you might do. I'll just move to the next plot here then to capture that information. Some of these other buttons here, uh, this first one is for pinning the location. So we can pin the location of the entire trial um, or just this particular uh, plot. So as we're standing here, if we want to record the GPS coordinates of our device as it is you know, right where I'm holding it, then it will save that um, GPS coordinates for this particular plot. The settings here uh, would, you know, would allow you for all of the assessments you're going to take, mark them all as excluded, um, or you can kind of pivot to some of those other sections if, oh no, there's, you know, you get out there in that first or second plot and realize that there's a pest you didn't think was there and I need to add another assessment. We can kind of bounce around to, to some different sections to pull in more columns or, or whatever we would need to do. So that was the settings there. Uh, the, the arrow will just go to the previous plot. So if I realized, oh, I should have done something um, we can go back or forward. Then the search icon here, it's going to use my location. Um, this shows all of the plots of my trial. And you'll see that's kind of in order of my walking path. So from 105, we skip over to 205 and work our way back. Um, so if you needed to specifically move to a certain plot, uh, we can do that. Let me actually go back and maybe a more 
practical example of when you'd want to skip over is when you're all done taking your assessments, I'm not going to bore everyone with filling in all of the details. I'm just going to press this green arrow to skip through a couple more just so we have a few more plots, even if they all have the default value, it'll at least give us something to look at. Um, I won't go through all of them. When you get to the last assessment for the trial, then to access the data review, let's click on these three little data points or these three little dots and get to the, the, the data review. So this will create the heat map drawing out the trial and it'll take the lowest assessment value, put that in white, the highest assessment value in the dark red, and then everything in between is that gradient. Here in my case, we didn't do anything particularly exciting. Um, so we, we've got one that's three, um, one that was two and everything else is one. So, so not a whole lot of, of excitement here. And then the rest of these black are plots I haven't taken data with yet. But I can zoom in, see a little bit more information um, and kind of move around the, the plot a little bit. So you do get the plot number and the treatment number. So that was um, wanting to see the randomization. Um, this, this would be one method. If I click on like or tap on 101 here, you do get to see a little bit more information, uh, specifically what the assessment was in addition to the treatment number. And then it also does the color by current treatment uh, essentially. So you can see how that treatment performed across the different reps. See how consistent consistent it was. And then of course, just clicking on different plots, we'll continue to do that um, and see how uh, they, they may have performed. And I can zoom out again to get that overall feel. This is for that first assessment. I can click the over button to also look at the map for our second assessment. Which again, I didn't have a very interesting assessment at all. They were almost all my default value. Um, you can turn on or off that these buttons up here. Um, if you want to hide the untreated plots, they're made in gray, all of the, the check plots. Uh, if you didn't want that scale to be affected, essentially. So if, if those are all zero, uh, you know, that kind of just skew, you know, kind of skews the data in a sense as far as the shading and stuff. So maybe I don't want those included at all. So that way I get a little better granularity in my, you know, treated plots that really matter to me. So you can do things like that. Um, question about some summary statistics. Uh, we will see that in just a moment. Uh, I don't think we have standard deviation uh, and the treatment average, not currently. Uh, we will get uh, the check average and the overall average. Uh, we'll see that in the completion dashboard in, in just, just a few moments. So this is the assessment review. Let me go back here again, kind of best practice. You're all done with the plots. Um, before you proceed on, um, you can review that. And that's a good case where um, maybe there's one value that's really, really high compared to, to the rest of them or really low. Well, let's walk over and view that plot and see what went wrong. And so we you can use that um, magnifying glass to browse in. All right, we need to walk over to plot 105 and figure out what happened. And maybe it's just, oh, well, you know what, you know, oops, I typed 15, it was supposed to be, you know, 45, you know, some, something extreme like that. Um, I really think that's the power of, of bringing ARM to the field is that uh, you know, paper and pencil, um, you're hand typing this in the next rainy day or even later that night, um, you know, when, when you get back to the office, there's, there's nothing you can do if you find an outlier, some value that doesn't make sense. Um, 
your best case in that scenario is if you feel confident that it's wrong, you could throw it out. And now you're going to lose degrees of freedom and some statistical power, um, but you know at least you caught it. Here with AR Mobile, having um, these tools available to you while you're still at the trial site, you can go over and, and look at that assessment and make sure the value is correct, um, you know, that it wasn't a typo. Uh, maybe there was something very odd that you didn't notice that first pass through, but yeah, this really was 15 and something strange seemed to happen. Maybe I should take a couple of pictures and, and, and investigate further or, or whatever the case may be. Um, once you leave the site, uh, it's too late. You, you, can't, you can't get that back. So having these tools available uh, to immediately summarize and catch these things, um, I think is, is really uh, important. So I'll get off my soapbox here um, and, and wrap up with the demo. So here I'm gonna click on my navigation just to cheat to the very end. So let me scroll down to the very last plot. But we'll just pretend I just got done with all of my assessments. Uh, just for the heck of it, let's give this a three and a, and a 30, just to have something different. Now, when I proceed on to uh, the next plot, there actually isn't a next plot. So this triggers our assessment summary to say, all right, we're, we're wrapping up this assessment. And so here we can fill in kind of our header details uh, uh, documenting other aspects of, of this assessment. So my example is, is poor. I don't have any pests or crops linked to this assessment. So that wasn't very good planning on my part ahead of time back in the office, um, but certainly I can select uh, the pest here. So I, I clicked, let me cancel, sorry, the, uh, the three buttons here on the right, and I can fill this information in. So I have um, my list, my personal list, uh, now called favorites in ARM, uh, my favorites list of the, the, in this case, the diseases and uh, whatever pests. In my case, it's a disease because we were, that was the rating we were doing. Uh, I'll just grab one from this list, doesn't really matter. Um, that's my personal list from my own ARM software loaded in with the base information. And now once you have a pest or a crop chosen, uh, we can define, we can document the pest stage, density, diameter, wh whatever it is you need to fill in. Maybe I'll do the, uh, the density. Uh, so you would choose a unit. And once you choose the unit, then you'll see the majority min max, all those values can be filled in. And again, this, this type of information would be the one question mark when working with a customized version of ARM. If you don't find in their header a spot for the pest density majority, then that would be kind of an indication to you that that might not come across into their trial file. But everything else will. So if it can't find it, ARM will just shrug its shoulders. You won't get inundated with errors and everything will stop or anything like that. But that would just be the one thing to, to consider with those customized versions. All right, so after documenting that, I can go to the next assessment. And basically kind of the same, same thing. Here's my second assessment, my phytotoxicity. In this case, I did have a crop selected uh, and I could define whatever details of my crop that I would want. Maybe I'll just cherry pick the height here. Um, I was type in numbers, even though they won't make any sense at all. And, um, Oops, might as well fill in the max since I did the minimum. And there you'll see there's some logical checks to make sure, okay, the, the maximum needs to be bigger than your minimum, things like that. Um, all right, trying to wrap this up quick, then we'll say done. And so we've completed those assessments. So here, next step is our completion dashboard. So this one trial, we may have many trials that we just finished with. 
Um, but dropping that down, you can see the two assessments we took. So here's kind of what, what Michelle had alluded to, uh, some of the statistics. Again, not, not heavy, uh, maybe even calling it statistics would be, <laughs> would be a bold statement, um, uh, more just, just a summary. So your overall average um, kind of pulling out the, the control treatments to see that average uh, if you do have a standard product as well, seeing that, uh, and that's done on both of the um, both of the assessments. At this stage, the big thing to note: ratings entered. I've only done nine out of twenty, so that would be something. Obviously, in my case, I'm demonstrating we didn't do all of them. That's fine. Would be kind of a red flag for somebody who thought they did everything, and maybe there's one missing. Another quick quick thing just to mention on that. Um, the trial definition not being the actual trial file means that you could have your, you know, all the, the technicians in the field, maybe each of them would take a rep in a trial. And so you can have, you know, four or five different devices out there using ARM mobile, um, all using that same trial definition. As long as everyone puts their data in the right plot number, ARM, when it imports, will be able to, to congregate all of those uh, data points across the five different exported files all into the same trial altogether. So there's a lot of great flexibility and, and possibilities, I think, uh, with ARM Mobile and the way it's, it's kind of has, has structured. Um, I won't walk through that process, obviously, right now, but, but just something to think about. I, I, I'm kind of excited to see what groups will come up with um, to really match how you, how you take data. So that's the completion dashboard. Um, and that would really end our session as far as out in the field. Again, no internet access, so we're not ready to export. So I would just you know close my phone and um, you know, move on to, to the next task. Um, I can move on to another trial if I needed to. Um, if I wanted to select a different trial, whatever the case may be, um, that data is saved on, on the phone and it's saved you know, internally. So uh, if, I, if I close this window, if I open a new tab and browse out to, to Facebook or something, it does, doesn't matter. Um, it is on the device and saved there um, for us to return to once we have internet connection. So when we do have a connection again, we can go down to export assessments. This is just letting you know if you take a lot of images, you know that's a lot more data to send across. Uh, so you'll just want to make sure that um, <laughs> you stick with it. Eventually, it might take a little bit, depending on your internet speed and how much data you're sending. Um, but you, I'm sure tons and tons of plots of just numbers is basically nothing. It'll go really fast. Uh, once you start taking pictures, that's a whole different ball game. So that's kind of why we have that warning. Assessments that um, are totally filled in would be listed here. I'm gonna go to the partially complete since I didn't fill mine all the way in. So we just kind of have that sectioned off just to make sure that you're, you realize that those haven't been totally finished. And again, dropping that down, I've got those two assessments. And then I will export. And so this will send that data that we've taken out to my Dropbox folder. All right, so we were successful. I can go back, or if you press the little ARM icon in the in the corner, that'll always take you back to this home page. So if you're feeling lost, that's the best way just to get back to home base, basically. So that's it for the mobile app. And it's usually fast enough um, that already it will have synced with my Dropbox. So I will turn off my phone. I'll just move it to this other screen in case we need it. Um, but here now on my computer, I have my ARM, and just to show real quick that 
the, the interface for connecting to the ARM mobile is through this connect EDC. And I had set this all up previously to connect to, actually, I didn't connect to my Dropbox. I'm glad I reviewed that path. This is really that link. I'm running the Dropbox application on my computer so ARM can talk to it. So here is that folder structure ARM created for me previously. So ARM is kind of that initial setup and it creates all those folders. I'm gonna press next just so that it saves that option for me. And then if I want to export and create those trial definitions, that's the interface that'll show me my study list and I can choose the trials I wanna create those definitions for. I had already done that to, from the get-go and that's how we were able to use the mobile app already. So I'll cancel that. And so since ARM on my computer is connected to that Dropbox, it'll, it's automatically aware of the fact that we just exported data. So now if I open this trial, I'm not in that EDC section at all, I'm just opening this trial, my ARM will see that data out there and automatically import it without any extra clicks. And there, it just um, noticed that it brought it in. Uh, it looks like I might've had a duplicate column already. Uh, but it was able to bring these in here. Yep, I chose a poor example because it still had one of my exports in there. Um, but at any rate, so I guess this, this is not the data I just entered. It was from a file I had sitting in my Dropbox already. But at any rate, this would be the data we uh, took with our mobile device brought in automatically including the picture. Again, this is from a, a different demonstration, but uh, you get the idea. Um, there is that picture that we took with our device instead. And it's linked to that plot. It is now a picture in the same folder where our trial is at, which does not need to be in Dropbox. So that's sometimes a common question uh, to, to use ARM mobile. You don't need to move where your trials are. If you have your trials on your desktop, on the company network, wherever the trials are, they stay the same. And it's just a matter of creating a new folder where files will be put into. Um, you don't have to change anything else on your main ARM computer. So apart from, apart from my poor planning on, on already having a demonstration files picked up, um, hopefully that showed the, uh, the flow of the data and, and how easily it interfaces then with, with the ARM software just running on, on your computer. And this was the EDC connection. Um, so just within your company, if you have multiple ARM users, kind of up to your choice of how you roll it out. Does everyone need that ability to uh, send their trials out and import data? Maybe we just have one person in the office that's always managing that anyway. So we just need the one connection. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll work with you. Uh, just kind of start that dialogue on how best it would, would work to, to utilize it in, in your group. Well, we've made it to our, our hour and a half, our, our 90 minute um, target. Uh, I, I, I have a few minutes. If, if people did have questions, I don't want to, to cut anyone off, but I also want to respect everyone's time. So um, I thank everyone for, for joining us today. Um, if you have, have questions, you know, this is a new, new app we're getting we're getting our sea legs to some extent as well uh, in, in talking about this and, and kind of um, getting a feel for the possibilities that that will unlock for, for groups. So, so reach out to us uh, with any questions that you might have. As I mentioned, you can also demonstrate 
the app. So these these files that I worked with today, um, like I said, we have them in a in the Dropbox account. I can also share them through OneDrive or Google Drive. Uh, so you could um, use them and just on whatever device you have, you know, use that URL and, and give the app a try at the very least, just, just to get a feel for it. Uh, just just shoot us an email and we can we can connect uh, connect you up to that as well if, if you're interested. Next week, uh, so our next session next week will be um, not really showing ARM Mobile, but a couple of features that we kind of touched on today about ARM Mobile. But I think they're also really great standalone features, even if even if you're not going this route with data collection uh, to learn about ARM utilizing standard evaluations, uh, and then also personal lists or, or your favorites in, in ARM. So hopefully we'll be uh, seeing you again next week. Uh, the recording, we, we did record this session, so uh, we will send the recording to you. It'll probably be tomorrow, uh, depending on where you are in the world. Um, here it is, it is late in the evening. Uh, so by the time it gets done processing, I'll probably be able to send it out uh, tomorrow morning here in the US, which might be really late um, today yet for some of you. So <laughs> if I'm converting the, the time right. But again, thanks everyone for, for joining us today and, and the great, great questions and discussion earlier. It's, it's, it's great to get a feel for uh, it, at least your your first reaction to to the app. So, thanks everybody. Thanks Matt and uh, Michelle um, for your time in setting up these webinars for APAC in our time zone. Um, I really appreciate it, and I'm sure that the customer base here in Australia and New Zealand do as well. So thank you. Yep. Thanks Melissa. Bye-bye. Great job, Matt. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.